This is what every motorist dreads. It's late, it's dark, it's cold, and your car's broken down. Good afternoon, Thames Valley Police Motorway Control. Have you broken down? Right, have you called us before about it? Until now, the police have regularly been the first to handle emergency motoring calls, whether from their own patrols chancing on a breakdown or from the public on a motorway phone. Not all drivers are members of motoring organisations like the AA and RAC. And if the driver cannot move the car with the help of a friend or local garage, the police themselves will call a recovery operator on their rotor. Hello, is that Karen? Good afternoon, it's just Thames Valley Police. All right, what can I do for you? It's not a perfect system. The first garage on the rotor may be unavailable or lack the right equipment. But over the years, police rotors have provided work for some 500 independent recovery operators across the southeast. Right, we'll get on it straight away. Typically, recovery operators like Cowan's, based at Newport Packnell on the M1, are family businesses. They provide an invaluable service at all times in all weathers. And if recovery operators are generally unappreciated, it's because their potential users hope never to need them. They move everything from a motorcycle to a 44-ton articulated truck. For a car, they'll usually charge you about 70 or 80 pounds. And it's not just breakdowns and crashes that they deal with. They're also the unobtrusive specialists who the police use to recover stolen and abandoned vehicles for the benefit of the public. But change is now the order of the day. The police, like other institutions, are being urged to privatise. First, ACPO, the Association of Chief Police Officers, suggested police forces should reduce to a minimum the number of operators on their recovery schemes. Now, the Home Office is looking at ways to distinguish between the police's essential core duties and those that are ancillary and could be put out to commercial tender. The Chief Constable is under tremendous pressure to get value for money, and we've got to critically look at what we're doing. We've got to get feet on the beat, and therefore we look at everything we're doing, and if we can, and it's appropriate, we will look at alternative methods of dealing with some aspects of our work. And we will then concentrate on our core issues. Prompted by the Home Office, police forces across the country have been putting their vehicle recovery schemes out to tender. For the motoring organisations, whose influence has grown as car ownership has increased, it looked like a golden opportunity to expand their roles still further. We're doing it primarily because it's an important activity that is being privatised within the police force and it's very important that as the motorist champion we keep um, our eye on what's happening and we also ensure that the best possible standards are introduced. It's a business opportunity here, isn't it? It is a business opportunity for us. And that's PJM's there at the moment. Oh, yeah. Take them off the phone now and go ahead over. The police recovery scheme in Kent is one of 16 that have so far been contracted out. Others include Hampshire, Hertfordshire, Thames Valley and Norfolk. It's been a competitive and controversial process. The AA has won 11 of the 16. Here in Kent, they had to fight off seven rivals before the police awarded them the contract. Scheme operators say drivers now pay more because the equipment that they, the operators, are required to use is so expensive. Winters covers the Medway towns. To get on the new scheme, they had to invest more than £50,000. For someone to set out, you could spend, I'm sure there must be some firms that have spent £150,000, £200,000 on vehicles. Well, you spent about £50,000. Yeah. Has it been worth it? At the moment, no. Another problem for firms like Winters is that the AA insists that the trucks dedicated to the scheme have to be on standby at all times, day and night. They cannot therefore earn their keep by doing other work. The result, Simon Drury admits, is a two-tier system. Those who call direct get one price. Well, if I broke down half an hour from here and you had to come and recover me, I'd expect to pay about 50 quid. Would that be reasonable? That would be a reasonable sort of figure, yeah. That's what you would charge? That's what we charge is a straightforward breakdown. But if you are referred through the police recovery scheme, you'll pay more, much more. So if my vehicle had to be recovered on the police recovery scheme, as managed by the AA, half an hour from here, how much would you charge me? For us, £85 plus VAT. 85 85 plus VAT. And that would... Nearly we, 100. Nearly 100 pounds. But we'd, we'd guarantee to be there within less than half an hour. Whether, whether you were there, whether the car was locked, whether it was involved in an accident, whether it was down a ditch on its side. 
you know, it's, it's a different sort of thing. It's a completely different sort of thing to a straightforward pick up and tie. In terms of the charges, the direction from the police is that it should be reasonable charges. Every operator is an independent businessman and is responsible for charging a reasonable rate for the work that he undertakes. Auto Renovations near Rochester is one of 86 Kent operators who no longer get police recovery work. It's testimony to the quality of their service, they say, that they do work for many of the motoring clubs, like National Breakdown, who regularly inspect the company and its facilities. They come round to check that the vehicles are clean and tidy, that uh, obviously seat belts and baby seats, that if they're carried, they're all op operational and working. Because they're, you're carrying members of the public? Isn't it? Because we're carrying members of the public. The, the, yeah. the, the Steve Kitcher runs the company, which has an annual turnover of £400,000. He'd been on the old police scheme from the start and was amazed not to get on the new one. Well, obviously, it's a it was a large portion of our turnover um, working for the Kent Police. So on an annual basis, how much business would you be losing? I would say it was probably about 10% of our annual turnover. What, about £40,000? About £40,000. Saturday the 14th of January, Steve Kitcher is one of a cavalcade of Kent recovery operators who block the centre of Maidstone in protest. Some of the protesters had applied to join the scheme but failed. But most of those who used to do police work didn't apply because they couldn't meet the new standards or they objected on principle to the AA's involvement. Nine years and, and we've offered a, a, a service and now we've had it taken from under it. My job's on the line. Yeah, my well, mate's job's all on our the line. jobs are on the line, we're really. All, we're all, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, that we didn't rely solely on that, but I mean, that was a main part of our work income. It's not the first such demonstration. Other operators in other counties have caused similar havoc. What we are attempting to do is to give the public an awareness that there is an alternative. This is the important thing, not just to go via the police AA system. It's demonstrations and disruption like this which have caused other police forces to consider alternative ways to hive off their recovery schemes. One of those forces is Thames Valley which covers Oxfordshire, Berkshire and Buckinghamshire. I'd seen instances where breakdown uh, organisations had actually stopped working for individual police forces and I couldn't afford that to happen and so clearly I had to do a lot of homework. Chief Superintendent Viner therefore decided to approach his own operators, 70 of them covering the Thames Valley. He called a meeting to tell them of the pressures he was under. There was a significant likelihood at that stage an agreement would be signed and we viewed that with some considerable concern. Why? The A and RAC are currently, between them, running a number of other police vehicle recovery schemes across the country. There seems to be considerable unrest and unhappiness on the part of the operators. So the operators persuaded Thames Valley Police to do a deal, not with the AA or RAC, but with them. When the new scheme begins in May, the operators will form themselves into a cooperative. Unlike in Kent, the police here will continue to manage the scheme, but their staff in the control room will be paid for by the operator's co-op. More than anything, it was the operator's fear of the AA and RAC that prompted the deal. I think their fear, and these are the fears that they've expressed to me, they can see a gradual erosion of their living. They can see a gradual takeover by the motoring organisations, whereby all of the um, breakdowns are, in fact, taken over by motoring organisation. Avro believes the growing power of the motoring organisations is now threatening the livelihood of its members. More and more we see them eroding other areas of our profitable work such as police work, insurance work, private work and so on. And if they continue to do that then obviously there won't be any profitable work left and our members will go out of business. According to Peter Thomas, one of the operators on the scheme, they were led to believe that in future, when a serious accident or breakdown blocked roads, the police would, as a rule, call on a scheme operator to clear them, so the job would be done as quickly as possible. But that understanding, says Thomas, is not being observed by police officers on the ground. As other police forces review their options, the events in Kent won't be lost on them. Very, very quickly, go on, keep going. What was conceived as just a small-scale privatisation is turning out to have consequences bigger than anyone imagined.